Welcome to my presentation, Open Source JS, an opportunity for public health. My name is Markus Nederland and in this talk I will illustrate the history and capabilities of Open Source GIS and also give some guidelines how to navigate in the wealth of opportunities offered. First a few words about the institution I work for and my work group. I work for the Fondazione Edmund Mark which is located close to Trento, northern Italy. It has been founded in 1847 as Istituto Agrario San Michele Aladige. Today it consists of a research center, a technology transfer center and a high school with more than 700 staff. Of those 250 work in research. I'm the head of GIS and remote sensing unit of the research center. My group focuses on different topics, especially the development of GIS methods and its, develop in its implementation in software also the development of new remote sensing methods. We apply those to eco-health topics, landscape genetics, grape maturation and offer OGC compliant web services. Now I want to look back into the early days of open source GIS. It is important to know that this predates the Internet times. In those days the computers were very big. Data exchange and software exchange happened on magnetic tapes. In the early 80s, the first open source GIS systems appeared. One was the MOS system and the second one, Grass GIS, which uh, is under continuous development. Interestingly, if you look at the Open Geospatial Consortium history, you can see that it derived from the Grass Interagency Steering Committee, which turned then into the Open Grass Foundation. In 2006, the OSGEO, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation, was fun founded in order to have an umbrella foundation for the various open source GIS projects out there. If we look at the timeline, we start in the early 80s with two systems or three, MOS, GRASS for GIS and the Projection 4 library for uh, reprojection which is used in different software projects even today. You can see Two of those survived and they are continuously developed and then with the advent of civil internet things changed quite a bit. Having WWW available and also collaborative software development tools we can observe that from starting from 1995 a series of new projects have been established and developed. Virtual communities have been established and those were leading to these new software projects. In 2006 and 5 and 6 there was the discussion how to get this under a common hood. And the idea was to uh, fund the open uh, OS Geo Open Source Geospatial Foundation. You can see from the logos that there are well-known projects, among them also industrial players. As of today, there are more than 18,000 unique subscribers in more than 150 topic-oriented mailing lists. It's a very intensive uh, exchange of ideas. How does the landscape of the Open Source Geospatial Foundation look like? In the first place, there are the different projects, which are related to web mapping, desktop applications, geospatial libraries, metadata, catalogs, and all of them have steering committees to organize the related communities. But OSGEO is not only about software, it is also about public geodata, about education and community development. OSGEO itself is controlled by the charter members uh, who elect a board of directors. There is financial support from different sponsors, especially from industry. To acknowledge that uh, users want to speak their native language, a series of local chapters have been founded. And each year there are a series of conferences in different countries available. What are the offers of uh, FOS4G with respect to proprietary software? In this table you can see on the left side the different components from metadata catalogs to dedicated viewers, cartography tools, GIS analysis, handheld and mobile, web services and viewers, spatial databases, virtual globes and libraries. In the center column you find some proprietary products and on the right side you see a column of open source answers. 
you can see for each proprietary product there's at least one open source product available often even several to choose from at the page bottom you can see a more complete and detailed comparison which has been published as a scientific article between volunteer work there are also different means of gaining new developers there's an important support from Google through the Google Summer of Code each year Google is donating more than 100,000 US dollar to OSGEO which are then uh, given to a set of students these students apply for a project in the different OSGEO projects and they suggest what software extension to develop they have three months of time and if upon success they will receive 5,000 US dollar in the past, this is already ongoing for several years, in the past many of the OSGEO projects have gained new software development tools, which means extensions, but also new developers because sometimes these students remain and become core developers. Besides software, geodata are very important. There's the OSGEO Geodata Committee discussing public uh, data availability. Of course the idea is to foster also in to enforce also in Europe the release of public geodata and this is now slowly taking place and happily we can see that in these years more and more geodata repositories are open to the public. The geodata committee aims at uh, generating a catalog hopefully in the near future also with uh, uh, metadata harvester. Another topic is education. It is very important to enable people to teach, not only to offer courses to end users, but also to enable more people to teach courses. And OSGEO is offering an educational content inventory in different languages. As of today, there are more than 60 tutorials and courses available, not only with slides, but also with the accompanying data sets. Like this you can receive complete data sets in different languages and for different topics from this website. Besides online courses there are of course books. Several books have been published in the last 10 years. Here you see a set of them. It is an incomplete list and they are addressing different topics like map servers, analyzing data, OpenStreetMap management, grass uh, GIS usage, and different approaches to geospatial data handling as well as uh, data analysis with R in terms of spatial data analysis. How can users obtain support? There are different possibilities of course through mailing lists and forums which are always online but sometimes users seek uh, professional support from companies. There's a list of service providers available here you see the related web page on the OSGEO website. You can search for different countries, you can search by language and also by technology expertise. And finally, uh, there's a basement in academia because many open source software projects were started in academia and since then academia is pretty much involved. To come to a conclusion, we would state that there are almost unlimited possibilities with GRASS and related PhosphoG software thanks to rich interfaces. Rich interfaces in terms of data exchange, in terms of uh, import-export of different formats and also in terms of user interfaces. Open source GIS software is addressing different user levels from newcomer to power users and uh, it is especially important to say that for heterogeneous environments, environments with proprietary software interoperability is very important. Many projects rely on interoperability libraries which are also used in proprietary software, the same library, and this is ensuring that data exchange is easy and straightforward. In terms of software quality, we can point out that the source code is peer-reviewed and here we are following the academic model, of course, of scientific publication. In, for example, the GRASS software development is having a dedicated mailing list in which uh, every change to the software is published in real time. 
and several developers are following this list closely they are analyzing the changes and they are commenting on it to make further improvements looking at the GrassGIS software and likewise other open source GIS software they are ready for massive data uh, processing which is very important nowadays to address public health problems in the second part of my presentation I will illustrate some more ex uh, this with some more examples. Thank you for your attention.